So guys, anti-spark connectors, like this XT90 right here. I'm sure you guys have seen these before. Uh, they are pretty common for large uh, multi-rotor builds, 6S and beyond. I mean, some people even use them for 4S. But why do we need them? Why do the big batteries spark uh, when you plug them in? And what can we do to avoid that? Well, it all comes down to a couple of things. The first thing is the size of the battery that you're using. And the second is our friend, the ESC. Here's an example of a blown ESC. This one was uh, from a build. I replaced the ESCs for some larger ones, so I just cut this one off. And this guy hanging out right here on the ESC. This is a capacitor wired in parallel with your battery input. So let's go ahead over to the whiteboard and I'll kind of explain to you guys why these are here and what happens when you start putting way more voltage than most people do into a setup. Your connection between your battery and your aircraft looks like this. So for example, here's your battery. Okay, let's say this side is negative. Let's make this side negative and we'll make this side positive. Now we're going to have a cable that runs from negative, positive, to your ESC. But in front of your ESC, you have a capacitor. And the capacitor is wired in parallel with the battery. Now it's a polarized capacitor, so it's going to look like this. Right? Now let's make that a little more even. I believe that's the right schematic symbol. Okay? So, the circuit begins here at the aircraft's battery. We move over to the capacitor. Now this is the issue that causes the sparking problems whenever we plug in a battery because for two reasons. The first reason is because the voltage potential when the capacitor is fully discharged, so when your aircraft is not running, has not been running for a while, the voltage potential across here is equal to the potential between your battery and ground. So let me put this into context. Because this is entirely uncharged, the potential between this side and this side is the same as the potential between this side of the battery and this side of the battery. And now if you have a fully charged 4 cell, that's 16.8. If you have a fully charged 6 cell, what is that? 16. Twenty-five point two, I believe. My math might be wrong, so feel free to call me out on that if I'm wrong. But basically, what's happening here is if this is the potential between here and here is twenty-five five point eight, and this is twenty-five point eight across positive and negative, before this capacitor has any charge in it, it appears to the circuit to be almost a dead short. Now why do I say almost? Because all capacitors do have what's called an equivalent series resistance. Now for most capacitors that equivalent series resistance is extremely low. It's probably going to be about the same as your battery between uh, maybe about 5 and on the high end, 100 milli ohms. So there is going to be a, a, t a resistance value, but that resistance value is going to be incredibly small. So while this would not be a complete total short circuit, what's happening is when you connect your battery to your capacitor, the charge current to your capacitor, let's do some quick math here. The charge current to your capacitor, if you're at 25, point two volts and 
let's say, 50 milliohms. We can calculate exactly what the charge current will be. We do that with Ohm's law. So I current equals volts divided by resistance. So 25.2 divided by 0 0.05. 25.2 divided by 0 0.05 equals 5. 104 amps. That's ridiculous. That's a lot of current. But keep in mind, as the capacitor charges, the potential between the capacitor and the battery is smaller because this approaches 25.2 volts fully charged. So after a few milliseconds, the capacitor reaches the same level as the battery, and the current between the two is zero. The flow between the two is zero. But the instant you plug the battery in, it's peaking at 504 amps. And that's the reason that you get an incredible spark when you plug in your battery. And we know that that spark can damage our connectors. Creates a lot of heat, can vaporize, pit, and damage the metal in our connectors. So how do we go about solving that? Well, this is where the anti-spark connector comes in, and it's done in a very, very simple way. So if you guys take a very careful look at this XT90 here, you'll notice something. You'll notice that it says on the side, 5.6 ohms. That's a little weird, don't you think? Why would they put uh, a resistor inside a connector? Isn't that a waste of energy? Now you'll also notice, if you look very carefully in there, there's actually two bands. There's a band at the top and a little conductor band at the bottom, but the negative side is a single conductor. Why is that? Let's go over to the whiteboard and talk about it. So remember this equation. I equals V over R. If we want I to be lower, R needs to be higher. So let's try this. Volts equal 25.2 volts. Now let's say we increase that by a couple factors of 10. Okay, so 25.2, let's say we divide that by 5 ohms. So we've increased the resistance of that whole circuit significantly. Because we're not just dealing with the capacitor anymore. Basically we have our battery our capacitor, but in series with this, we put a resistor. So we artificially raise the equivalent series resistance of the circuit. So 25.2 divided by 5 is going to give us amps. So that gives us 5.4 amps. Significantly, significantly more reasonable. Will not produce any noticeable sparks. Will not pit or damage our connectors. And uh, if we're using pretty standard capacitor values for a, res uh, for a speed controller, such as this being less than 1,000 microfarads, 
microfarads. There we go. It's only going to take maybe a half or a quarter of a second to charge this capacitor at 5 amps. Very, very, very short period of time still. So, how is it that in a single connector we can make this all happen without having the user need to worry about anything? Well, that comes down to the design of the connector. Alrighty guys, so here's my very poorly drawn uh, XT90 connector. And it is set up viewed like this. So the negative is on the left side, the terminals are at the top. Now, let's take into account that all of the green areas are insulators, all of the black areas that are shaded are conductors. So here's what we've got. Here's our negative side of the connector, which is a single tube. This is a single conductor, just like any other connector. Now, it starts to get very interesting on the positive side. Remember how we talked about uh, Ohm's law? I equals V over R. If we raise R, I goes down, right? Which is a very bad thing when we're trying to fly, but is very important if we're trying to prevent a spark. So as you plug your connector into the aircraft, the first thing the other connector is going to make contact with is the negative and also the positive. Now let's watch where the energy flows through the circuit. So if these are connected back to your battery, there is now 5.6 ohms of resistance with this resistor here built into the connector charging your capacitors and running the aircraft. So like we said, if the uh, voltage is 25.2 volts over 5.6 ohms, anybody figure out what the maximum current would be? would be 4.5 amps. Forgive my terrible writing as I try to write across the board leaning in front of the camera here. But uh, maximum current when it's connected just to these is 4.5 amps. Now keep in mind that these are not connected. There's an insulator between this first positive terminal and the second positive terminal. Now as you pl are plugging in your battery, the connectors linger in here maybe for a quarter of a second or so and pre-charge the capacitors. That's plenty, plenty of time to charge the tiny little capacitors that are in your aircraft without sparking. And then as you push the connector down through, it makes connection here, removing the resistor from the equation because electricity always follows the path of least resistance and powers your aircraft the same way a normal connector would. So this is a really cool, elegant solution to that sparking problem. The only issue is especially with the connectors that I've noticed that are two pieces instead of one, like the XT90, people tend to linger in the top position and not push it all the way down. And that can be dangerous because as this resistor is in series, it dissipates all of that extra energy as heat production. So what can happen is if you leave that long enough, you can end up melting your connector. But other than that, it's a great solution to the sparking problem. It doesn't actually remove any power from the aircraft. It just allows you to charge those capacitors in a more reasonable manner without damaging your connectors and without damaging any other uh, sensitive equipment in the aircraft that could be damaged by an in a very large inrush of current. So if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to rate, comment, subscribe. Uh, talk trash about me in the comments below if you so choose. And we'll be back with another Tech Tuesday a week from the day. I'll see you guys next time.